prepared for us. I was tempted to ask uh, Jerry to come also. Jerry, please come. Kama mtoto wa Chicago na watu wengine kuja naye tu. Yote yote ni faida. Amen. Mulianza wawili sasa mumeanza kujaza dunia yenu. Si ni sawa. Huyu ndiye Jerry. Mnamuona? Ni mnamuona eh? Si ni mpoa? Nilimwekea mafuta awe pasta hata Kwa hivyo ukimuona wacha kuita yeye Jerry. Muite pasta. Jerry sasa unaweza muombea huyu. Wendi unajua maombi unaombaga ili anointing inatoka. So praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. We pray that as Pastor Richard ministers to us, that you're going to use him, dear Father Lord, and we invite your presence in this place. We thank you, and we praise you. For in Jesus' name, do you pray? Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. I want you to give a high five to your neighbors, you... Welcome them. Hallelujah. Those who are seated, they are letting us down. Please tell them they are letting us down. Amen. <laughs> wow. Amen. Now, before you sit, because you will sit for a long time, I want to take this opportunity to thank our bishop and our father for even the privilege which he has accorded me to be in this place, to stand on this holy altar and speak to you great people. Amen. Amen. Can you help me appreciate my father? Amen. 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 I count it as an honor and I partake it with all humility. And thanksgiving to God for what he's doing in this place. Amen. Amen. I also appreciate our mom. Can we help me appreciate our mom? Amen. She's a great mother and we love her as a family. Amen. Now to all our beloved pastors in this place and leaders in this place. Come on, church, help me appreciate them. Amen. <clears throat> and now I want you to lift your hands above your head and appreciate your neighbor because he's a great old woman or man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> now, before you see, there is a story that is told of two old couples who are driving, the, the man was on the steering wheel and the woman was, or the wife was seated at the seat, at the back seat. And what happened is, uh, they looked, they, actually the lady, she looked through the window and she saw a young couple that was newly married and they were driving in their car and they were seated beside each other. And uh, this, uh, Lady, she said, she called now to this old man and said, Honey, do you remember our days when we were still young? We used also to sit beside each other and we were kissing each other as you drove. Then the man cleared his throat and he said, <coughs> Who moved? It's you who moved. <laughs> Come on, tell your neighbor, have you moved? <laughs> or you are closer to God? <laughs> Amen. Now, with one loud shout, let's appreciate God as we sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Please take up your seats. Praise the Lord. Now this morning, we want to look at the word of God from the book of Psalm 149. And just look at a few thoughts. 
from this word. The Bible says, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. Praise him in the assembly of his saints. Verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in him, their maker. Let Zion's children triumph and be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in chorus and choir and with the single or group dance. Let them sing praises to him with the tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation and adorn the wretched with victory. Let the saints be joyful in the glory and beauty which God confers upon them. Let them sing for joy upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and a two-edged sword in their hands. Verse 7 says, To wreak virtue upon the nations and chastisement upon the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written, He, the Lord, is the honor of his saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you in the house and you're saying amen? amen. Wonderful. Now, this morning I want us to look at what is praise. Amen. What is praise? What is praise? It's just something which I want us to look at. Amen. Now, a story is told of a certain lady who was married and she wanted to divorce her husband. And she wanted to hurt this man so terribly. So she went to a counselor and asked the counselor to advise her, to counsel her on how she could divorce this man. I'm not at forgetting for divorce. Because I am a person who is anti divorce. Amen. Now, the counselor told her, go home and begin to talk well concerning this man. Whatsoever he does good, speak well of him. Begin to praise him. When he comes home, take off the coat, put it somewhere, give him hot, a hot drink, and so forth and so forth. So she began to do it. And this guy began to love this woman. And, 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 and uh, after three months, because she was given a duration of doing it for three months, she went back to the counselor and said, I have done everything that you are telling me to do. Then the counselor told her and said, go now and ride for a divorce. Then she said, what? What are you telling me? I have won back my husband. How do you want me to divorce him? So praise is something that is very powerful. Amen. Now the scripture which we read in Psalm 149, we are commanded to praise God. We are also to sing him a new song. Come on, tell your neighbor, praise is a command. We are commanded to praise God and we are commanded to sing him a new song. In other words, we need not to sing old songs that we have lost interest in. That we cannot sing with any new kind of uh, fatality. We need to sing a new song unto God. Amen. We are to sing to him in unity as a congregation. That's what the scripture says. Amen. Now, I know in church we have always problems with some people. They come to church and they want to keep quiet. But when they are outside the church, they want to shout. They want to speak loudly to everyone that comes on their way. But the Bible commands us to sing to him in unity as a congregation. Now, our praises, according to the same scripture in verses 2, our praises should be full of joy. Amen? Our praises should be full of joy. You cannot praise somebody and you have put on a gloomy face or you have taken some bitter lemon. Amen. Even in church, when we come to church, when we are praising, you know, we believers, what happens is when it comes to prayer and when it comes to praise, we always want to put on a stony face. We are always angry with the devil. 
and we have become also angry even with God when we are praising him. But we need to change that. Amen. So that when you are praying, you are smiling at God because you know he will do it. And when you are praising, you are full of joy. Amen. Amen. Now, we are also to praise God in a dance. Hallelujah. I like the small kids that were here earlier on because some of us if we were taught earlier on when we were still young how to dance like that we could be praising God better but now we are rigid because it's like when we are growing old it's hard to bend us so even when you know I, I always train worship leaders so I will use our worship leaders here even when you see our worship leader leading us, she's just maybe standing there like that. Because of what we are not flexible enough, like those small kids who could come on the floor and dance in praise of God. But you know what? We need to praise God in a dance. Tell your neighbor we have to praise God with a dance. Please, you can lock yourself in your house if you don't know how to dance and begin to exercise on how to dance so that when you come to church, you give a dance unto God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, we are to praise him with musical instruments. Amen. That's why when this guy is playing the keyboard, you feel played guy, played, played man because of what you want to hear the music. And every one of us, you know, Plato, one day he said, you cannot call yourself a scholar if you have not learned to play any instrument. So most of the time, we are believers, but we are anti-instruments. We don't have instruments. When our children want to play instruments, we want to tell them, you need to be a lawyer or you need to be a doctor. But I want to tell you, we need to redeem these things unto us so that we praise God with instruments. Amen. <laughs> Please go and purchase an instrument and begin to learn. Our cell groups could be full of vitality and great worship if we had instruments there and we are worshiping. You know, if one of the instrumentalists don't come to church, we feel a void. Why do we have a void? Because I'm not saying you, but maybe you have not learned to play some instrument. Now, we are to praise God on our beds, according to verses 5. So, even at night, when you are sleeping, you are not dreaming other things, but you are just praising Jehovah God. Amen. Now, we want to lift up, or we are to lift up high praises of God, according to his word. That's why verses 6 says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hands. So we are to lift up high praises of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you together with me? Now, throughout the Bible, the commands to praise the Lord are too numerous to mention. Angels and the heavenly hosts are commanded to praise the Lord. When we look at Psalms 103, verses 20, the Bible says... Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. All inhabitants of the earth are instructed to praise the Lord. When we look in Psalms 138 verses 4, the scripture says, All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Now when you hear God's word, you need to respond by praising God him amen now we are to praise him in singing we are to praise him with shouting we are to praise him with dance we are to praise him with musical instruments as i have said and i have said to us that praise is the joyful recounting of all god has done for us it is closely in the twin with thanksgiving as we overbar God to uh, uh, appreciation for his mighty works on our behalf. So when we are praising God, we are joyfully recounting what he has done. Amen. 
Praise does not require anything of us. It's merely the truthful acknowledgement of the righteous acts of God. Now, since God has done many great things, it's our responsibility to praise him. Praise the Lord. We have to praise the Lord. Amen. Now, before I give us a few points concerning praise, what is praise? Let me just talk about the conflict that is there. Amen? The conflict that is there. There is an ending conflict and war in the area of praise and worship. And Satan arrays his forces against this area. For instance, very little is spoken on our pulpits about praise and worship. Yet it's the central theme in the scriptures and in the heart of God. Like for example, if I can ask for you who has been in salvation for a long time. How many conferences have you attended that adopt praise and worship conference? How many revival meetings you have attended that are adopt, that are said praise and worship revival meeting where we are taking a whole week or three days just to zero in in the theme praise and worship. Praise the Lord. If I can ask, I don't want to ask the worship team, but let, let, let me ask us. How many books have you read concerning praise and worship? Yet it's the central theme in the Bible. And there was silence in. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. So it, there is a conflict. It's a conflict in itself. Amen. Amen. Now, Satan attacks on worshippers. He's arrayed to attack worshippers. When we look in Job chapter 1, we find out what Satan was planning actually against this worshipper. We find the Bible says that there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright and one that feared God and turned away from evil. It's simply narrating to us the worship lifestyle of Job, brother Job. Now, verses 3 says, this man, his possessions uh, were 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 female donkeys and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Now when we look in verses 13, the story changes. It begins to change the story and it says, and there was a day when his sons, his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house and there came a messenger unto Job and said, the oxen were plowing and donkeys feeding beside them and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Amen? They took the donkeys, they took the oxen away, the seven hundreds, all of them, they took them away. Then he continues, verse 15, uh, and the servants fell upon them and took them away and they slain the servants, so forth, verse 16, and while he was yet speaking, another one came. Then he said, the fire of God has fallen from heaven and has burned up the sheep. Now, I'm drawing us to this so that we understand that one of the things which the enemy focuses on is to attack the helps in our worship. Because all these things were helping Job to worship God. So the enemy will always focus on attacking the helps to our worship. Let me just enumerate a few of them. One of them is the word of God. Now, God's word reveals the, his nature his attributes, and his expectations when we worship him. The word gives us the how, the why, and the who to praise and worship. The word gives us also vocabularies or a language to worship. Now what happens is Satan makes it hard for believers to read or study or listen to the word of God. He makes it hard. Amen. Amen. How many of us, 
we are ardent readers of the word. And how many of us, once in a blue moon, we just want to open the word and read it? Why? Because the enemy wants to take away the vocabularies of our praise and of our worship. So that when we come to church, when the worship leader says, lift up your hands, praise the Lord, worship him. We have no words to say. In the olden times, people will only be saying, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. They are not worshiping. They are just repeating the word hallelujah. Or others, because they don't have vocabularies to worship, they switch on in tongues now. They begin to speak tongues. <laughs> the enemy attacking helps to worship. Amen. But if you are full of the word, you know who your God is. You don't need even a worship leader to lead you. You just need to feel the presence and you create also the presence inside you and you begin to lift up God. You are great, oh God. You are mighty. You are glorious. You are excellent. You are holy. You are wonderful. You are precious. You begin to exalt him because you have the word. Amen. The second help is prayer and praise. Now, prayer develops a hunger for God and his word. Prayer places us at a place of surrender to God's will and leading. Now, Satan makes it hard for us to pray. Now, throughout the week, we have been waking up very early because our work demands us to rise early and go to work. We come home late. We are very tired. It's hard for us to pray. After eating, we want to doze. We are feeling sleepy. So we give only a short time unto God in prayer. And what happens is our hunger for godliness or for God's things goes away. That is the intent of Satan. But we need to develop. We need to be decisive enough to decide to have time for prayer. Amen. Ah, uh, Like this season when we are praying here and fasting. All of us we could be filling this place at six. All of us we are, we are lifting a, a, a union of voices unto God. In here like many mighty waters unto the heavens. And I tell you this place will never be the same again. Our nation won't be the same again. Because of what we have a united people in prayer. But what happens is the enemy wants you to pray alone. The other one prays alone. Praise the Lord. There is power in united prayer. Amen. Satan makes it hard for us to pray. We feel sleepy and tired. Or captivating television uh, programs. Whereby we want to dwell there and watch. You know, I have a brother, a certain brother in the Lord. And this guy, he can watch movies. He goes to work very early. He can watch movies up to even four in the morning. So he goes on to sleep for one hour. Then he wakes up to go to work. Things that have captivated him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, most of the time we come to church tired and we don't want to dance. We don't want to sing aloud. We don't want to clap. We don't want to shout. We don't want anything. <laughs> Friends, prayer, the word of God, and worship are inseparable. When you miss one, you affect all others. And that is what Satan desires. Now, the other thing is sacrificial offering. It's a help in worship. God desires his worshippers to joyfully and willingly give their material substances as they praise and worship. Now when you look in Psalms 96 verses 7 through 10, it speaks to us concerning worshipping God, praising God and also giving offerings. Now the devil wants us to feel it is painful to give. So he steals away the joy of giving. Please, my fellow brothers and sisters, if you are giving unto God and you are not giving out of joy, you are just donating money in the church and it is not touching the heart of God. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. 
So you need to be rejoicing, saying, Lord, thank you. This is a grand opportunity to give. As you give, amen. amen. Not to frown when the offering basket passes near you, amen. Now, I pray that in our church here, we will not wait for preachers who come with prophecies for us to walk to the altar to give. But during our praises and our worship, we will walk and kneel at the altar and empty our pockets, our wallets unto God. We need believers who will face Satan like Moses faced Pharaoh in Exodus 10, 25 to 26 and said, we must go with our sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not a hoof be left behind for of, for of them must we take to serve the Lord. Amen. And we know not what we must serve the Lord until we go to that place. Please, my brothers and sisters, carry your checkbooks to the church. Carry your wallet to church. Carry your ATMs to church. Because as you worship, God will speak to you what to do. Amen. Yeah. You know, in the church, especially in Kenya, what happens is we always wait for preachers who come with prophecies. They say, I see God lifting three people in this place. Then we feel a goosebump inside us. We begin to think, that is me. I need to tap into that word. <laughs> My fellow brothers and sisters, I was telling some people in church, I don't know if my faith is the one that is little or what, but what happens is most of the prophecies these people have sp spoken, I've never realized them in my life. And I always wonder, is my faith real or not real? But we have a sure word of prophecy. And this is the sure word of prophecy, which we need to keep. Amen. This word will never fail. <laughs> so during praise, be coming. You are coming. I want to tap into the anointing that is flowing. The anointing of praise. Amen. Let's not, let's not wait for preachers from Nigeria. <laughs> or Ghana. <laughs> or Kenya. And Pesa number. So those are the ones which we want to go and say, I want to tap. You know, one of the things which God has done is he has locked potential in insignificant people. Yeah, people whom when you look at them, you can despise. Like our pastors here, when they are preaching, they have waited on God. And you, you are looking, ah, Pastor Kichu here, I just know him. Yeah. Bishop, I know him. <laughs> you are missing the thing. So when somebody comes and he's preaching, he's sweating. You know, some of us, we can pre even if we preach because we are anointed, we cannot wait. We, are, we, ha we don't have to work. <laughs> and you, you think we are not anointed. Amen? Please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, there is another thing which the enemy uses to attack the worshippers. And this is ignorance. An ignorant worshipper. Now, I may not have time to talk about an ignorant worshipper. Uh, but let me just point out a few things. You know, when you look in John chapter 4, verses 22, there. The Lord Jesus Christ answers this Samaritan woman. And, and he says, ye worship, ye know not what. You do not know what you are worshiping. In other words, he's addressing an ignorant worshiper. Amen. Now, an ignorant worshiper is a very dangerous person. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me just highlight a few things. He, he or she comes to church. When almost praise and worship is over, 
They are ignorant worshippers. They are not in our church here. But let me just name a few of the things. Now, these people, in other words, their priority is not to worship and praise God. This ignorant worshipper, when we are seriously praising God, he or she is busy looking around, looking outside the window, being attracted by insects or birds or the people that are walking outside or by the cyclones that are in the air. In other words, he is easily distracted by things. An ignorant worshiper. When others are praising God, he or she is busy chewing gums. This is an ignorant worshiper. I say they are not here in church. But in some churches where I have been, I have seen them. They are chewing gums seriously. Now, I was taught when you talk to an elderly person, you need to stand upright. You don't need to pocket. You are not supposed to chew anything. A person. What about our God? That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 28, that having therefore received a kingdom, let us have holy reverence. Let us have fear as we offer to God our worship. Amen. Why? Verses 29 says, because God is a consuming fire. Praise the Lord. So when we are worshiping God, please put away your gums. We don't need them. God will not say you have a bad breath. No, 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 no. God will impress you more and more because you are worshiping him. Praise the Lord. An ignorant worshiper. <laughs> In other words, he lacks concentration. An ignorant worshiper sees the worship time as a waste of time. They say this, the songs sung are too many. The instruments are very loud. The singers are too, ener uh, too energetic in their dance. They are looking at, 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 at those things and they are criticizing. In other words, he lacks focus and is very impatient. Can I go on? Now, an ignorant worshiper is a very tired person. Ah, very tired. He wants to sit when worship is on. He yawns. Oh, he's hungry, yet it's only nine in the morning. I know they are not here in church. <laughs> Early as nine, they are yawning. They want to eat. They are ignorant worshippers. <laughs> in other words, this person is ruled by the flesh. His carnal nature is on top. Now, an ignorant worshipper thinks his neighbor is too loud to be around. Too excited for nothing. He often asks, should in the church be a place of quietness and calmness? This is an ignorant worshiper. <laughs> but tell your neighbor, you don't know where God has removed me. <laughs> Come on, tell them you don't know where he has picked me from. When I'm shouting to him, I mean what I'm doing. When I'm lifting my voices to him, I know what I'm doing. Because I know what he has done into my life. Hallelujah. I was a nobody. I was a nothing. But as the scripture today said, arise and shine. For your light has come. And the glory of God has risen upon you. His light shone into my life. His glory fell upon me. And that's why I'm dancing. That's why I'm lifting him. That's why I'm praising him as loud as I'm doing. Hallelujah. So Lord, no, let no one intimidate you by the look of their faces when it comes to the realm of praising God. Hallelujah. You know, okay. <laughs> now, I, I, I just want to explain maybe one or so. <laughs> what is praise? <laughs> Amen. What is praise? Number one. Amen. 
praise is a verbal confession and bodily expression of the heart's adoration for what God has done, is doing, and will do. Amen. So when we are praising God, we are saying there is a verbal confession. In other words, your mouth has to confess it. Your mouth has to speak it out. You cannot say, I'm praising in my heart. I'm singing in my heart. When the worship leader says, lift up your voice and sing unto the Lord. You, you are saying, me, I know what I'm doing. I'm singing in my heart. <laughs> you need to sing it out loud. Amen. Then also, it's a bodily expression of the heart's adoration. In other words, your body has to express the adoration that is in the heart. So if you are singing in the heart, then let your body express it by singing it out. If you are dancing, you are saying, me, I'm just dancing in my heart. When we look at you on the outside, you are standing. And you are saying, I'm dancing, even I'm jumping in the heart. You, I, 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 think, <laughs> I think you are aware of a story that is told of a young child in the class who was told by the teacher because he was disturbing and he was told to stand as a punishment. And when this child stood up, what happened is, he, talk, he bent and he spoke to his neighbor there. And he said, you know, the teacher thinks I'm standing, but I am seated. <laughs> so on the, you want us to believe like that. You want to say, me, the way you see me, inside my heart, I'm dancing. Inside my heart, I'm jumping. Inside my heart, I'm lifting my hands. And when we see you, you are just doing like this. You are lying. Amen? Tell your neighbor, it's not you. But I know whom the preacher is saying. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so your body has to express. Praise the Lord. Yeah. If, if we say, uh, like which song? Which song that says, lift up your hands. Okay, we lift up our hands in the sanctuary and you you are saying we lift our hands in the sun you see you are not coordinate there is a problem with your coordination <laughs> yeah there is a problem with your coordination when you say we lift our hands in the sanctuary you need to be lifting your hands when you say i'm dancing come come dance to the lord you have to dance you have to dance unto the lord amen you don't say come come dance and you are just there please God requires variety. How many of us, we had black and white televisions? Some time back, we had black and white televisions, the Great Wall. Now, what happens with the Great Wall is you cannot admire the pictures the way you admire what you have currently. I don't, I don't know if they are being sold also in the market. <laughs> But what happens, you cannot admire to view the pictures there. So why, uh, what happens is this, God requires creativity and variety. Amen. So that we are not just dancing the old one, that old one, the old one, which we got everyone dancing. That is what we are dancing. Can we dance? Can we, can, 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 can we Come and dance and, and, and even hold our hands together like this. And spin around as we are dancing unto the Lord. As we are praising God. Hallelujah. Why can't we do it like that? When we are praising God. Why are you afraid of your neighbor? That's why we are saying it's a fapo confession. And a bodily expression of the heart's adoration. For what God is doing. Amen. Amen. Now, let me just finish on this. 
praise is an expression of a thankful and a grateful heart. The second definition, praise, is an expression of a thankful and a grateful heart. Amen. So when we are praising God, our hearts are grateful. Our hearts need to be full of gratitude. Amen. Whereby we are dancing. We are praising God. We are saying, Lord, you are so good. You have done ABCD to me. Now we base on three things. Number one, what God has done. We look back, we have a remembrance of what Jehovah God has done. Praise the Lord. Now, there is one leading evangelist. He wrote a book and he said, those who forget. Those who forget. You know, it's unrighteousness to forget. Because the Bible says, God is not unrighteous to forget the labor of... Yeah. So, it's unrighteousness to forget. So, if you forget all the things what, that God has done in your life, you are helping, you are a brother or a friend to the devil. Don't forget. Amen? What God has done in your life, in your family. What God, you know, us as Kenyans, we are very forgetful. We always forget very easily. Even what God has done in our nation. We always forget so easily. And we go for demonstrations. The other thing is we base on what he is doing. So in other words, we are alert concerning the move of God. Like for example, I know in this place, there might be a few people, they are thinking God is not in deliverance church, Zimmerman. He is not moving the way he used to move. <laughs> But others, we are seeing God. Every step we are taking, ah, it is God taking us. So we have a heart to thank God. Amen? What God is doing. The psalmist says in Psalm 34 verses 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Then also we thank God. Our hearts are grateful to God for what he is going to do. Amen? For what God is doing what? Going to do. Now, when we base on that, we look at what God has promised in his word. So if God has promised to do something, we are grateful because we know what? He will do it. He will do what? Amen. So I want you to rise up on your feet. And just begin to give God some praise in the house. Begin to offer him some praise in this place. Come on somebody, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Begin just to exalt him the way you will deem it right to do it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you the praise Lord. We give you the glory Jesus. We honor you Lord. We lift you Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord praise in the house.